O come, let us worship God, and bow low before the God who made us, for he is the Lord our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My dear friends, as we gather together on this, the fifth Sunday in ordinary time, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins. You raise the dead to life in the spirit, Lord have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner, Christ have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Keep your family safer, Lord, with unfailing care, that, relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. <clears throat> Job began to speak. Is not man's life on earth nothing more than pressed service? Is time no better than hired drudgery? Like the slave sighing for the shade, or the workman with no thought but his wages? Months of delusion I have assigned to me, nothing for my own but nights of grief. Lying in bed, I wonder, when will it be day? Risen, I think, how slowly evening comes. Restlessly, I fret till twilight falls. Swifter than a weaver's shuttle, my days have passed and vanished, leaving no hope behind. Remember that my life is but a breath, and that my eyes will never again see joy. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Praise the Lord for he is good. Sing to our God for he is loving. To him our praise is due. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and brings back Israel's exiles. He heals the brokenhearted, he binds up all their wounds, he fixes the number of the stars, he calls each one by its name. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Our Lord is great and almighty, his wisdom can never be measured. The Lord raises the lowly, he humbles the wicked to the dust. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. A reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. I do not boast of preaching the gospel since it is a duty which has been laid on me. I should be punished if I did not preach it. If I had chosen this work myself, I might have been paid for it, but I have not. It is a responsibility which has been put into my hands. Do you know what my reward is? It is this in my preaching to be able to offer the good news free 
and not insist on the rights which the gospel gives me. So though I am not a slave of any man, I have made myself the slave of everyone, so as to win as many as I could. For the weak I made myself weak. I made myself all things to all men, in order to save some at any cost. And I still do this for the sake of the gospel, to have a share in its blessing. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. He took our sicknesses away and carried our diseases for us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus went with James and John straight to the house of Simon and Andrew. Now Simon's mother-in-law had gone to bed with fever and they told him about her straight away. He went to her, took her by the hand and helped her up. And the fever left her and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were possessed by devils. The whole town came round, crowding round the door and he cured many who were suffering from diseases of one kind or another. He also cast out many devils but he would not allow them to speak because they knew who he was. In the morning, long before dawn, he got up and left the house and went off to a lonely place and prayed there. Simon and his companion set out in search of him and when they found him, they said, everybody is looking for you. He answered, let us go elsewhere to the neighboring country towns so that I can preach there too because that is why I came. And he went all through Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out devils. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. One of the questions our theme today asks us is whether we are an optimist or a pessimist. Is our glass half empty or half full? Job, that great literary character of the Old Testament in our first reading, is clearly a man whose cup does definitely not run over. And who can blame him? Through no fault of his own, his life is beset by hardship and woes. And his position is made all the, all the worse by those so-called Job's comforters, his supposed friends who judge that his misery is entirely self-inflicted. And yet Job does not accept that verdict. And throughout his trials, he maintains his sense of integrity before God. We have all no doubt had Job-like experiences when life has seemed impossibly difficult, even unbearable, when we think, like Job, that our eyes will never again see joy. That sentiment has become all the more exposed during the days of Covid-19 but we can draw real and not false comfort from Job's example of Stoicism and faith. It's quite often the case that when times grow tough, we are tempted to try harder to overcome our problems. But sometimes it is far better and more wholesome to simply step back from the busy currents of our lives, and to be still, reflective, and to pray quietly. It is said, is it not, that we are human beings and not human doings, but we so often find it easier to do than simply to be. But if we are able to do anything in the first place, we must be. And as so often Jesus leads by 
example in today's gospel we hear of a somewhat fraught Jesus tired out the crowds have been clamoring for his healing touch but he gets up early and retreats from his doing to go to a lonely place and to pray Jesus indeed recognized the need to stand back from the frenetic activity of life and to simply be alone with God, even though that for him meant doing less. And that teaching of our Lord, alongside that of the great Job, shows us that just being is where we must be and to where we must often return to charge our batteries. It's no coincidence that one of the most popular hymns is Be Still in the Presence of the Lord. Let us hear those words afresh in our ears, be still in the presence of the Lord. We must take that idea, fill it with love, grow stronger in the love of Jesus and just be his people. We can do no better. Amen. <clears throat>
Blessed be the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed be you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for ever. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of his name, <clears throat> for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord our God, who wants to establish these created things to sustain us in our fragility, grant, we pray, that they may now become for us the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with your servant, Pope Francis and Norman, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Paul and St. Francis, St. John Henry Newman, St. Thomas of Canterbury, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May praise and glory find you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
for glory and honour is yours forever and ever. <clears throat> At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Through Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let them thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders for the children of men. For he satisfies the thirsty soul, and the hungry he fills with good things. <clears throat> Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.